Hey guys, what's up? It's Adam from Adam's Trail Notes, and today we are going to be editing a meteor shower image, or combining multiple uh, meteors from a time lapse and combining into one image so we can make a blended exposure of a meteor shower. And these uh, shots are really cool because after you get back from viewing the meteors that night, you can uh, go into Photoshop, blend them all together, and it looks like you captured 30 meteors in one photo. So we're gonna get into it. Of course, we got our sponsor, not sponsor, Trail Mix. Got this at Target. Shout out Target, I guess. Um, yeah, I haven't eaten any of this. It's been like a month and a half since I bought this. This is just gonna be for the video. It's just gonna be for, you know, us. Uh, basically, yeah, you know? Cause Adam's Trail Notes, Adam's Trail Mix, it's a common misconception from one friend. So, you know, Trail Mix is the snack of this show. I won't eat it, I just show it. But I have it now, which is dope. All right, cool. Back on this photo, um, that's up right there. Uh, the first time meteor shower was about two weeks ago. I went out with a friend. We went to Lake Henshaw. We set up a time, or I set up a time lapse uh, to capture all the meteors, and I explained it all, all of that stuff in this video here of actually being there and shooting it. And now we're in the editing stage because the editing stage is honestly one of the most fun parts about the whole photography process. And on these photos especially because you're going to take all these meteors that you captured and you're going to blend them all into one photo. And it makes a really cool photo like this one or like this one. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's say you went out there, you took a time lapse, caught all these meteors, and you want to know how do you create those really cool images you saw on the internet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a rather simple process. Um, hopefully you have a good understanding of at least Lightroom and Photoshop and how they function. Um, that's definitely going to help. I'm going to explain most of it, but uh, kind of go on the fact that you, you probably are aware of these softwares at least a little bit. So let's dive right into it. All right, so we're going to open Lightroom. Oh, no, not that. All right, so first you're going to import your photos down here. Okay, so I imported all these uh, photos into here. This is the per side meteor shower. And what I like to do is label basically when I took the time lapse. So this screen starts the time lapse, and then this screen is when I ended the time lapse uh, right here. So basically, this is kind of like the long part of the process is I go through each photo, and this was about 400 photos of the time lapse, and you literally go through and you just click and you, and I like to star them. So like if I see a meteor, I'll press two and go and go and go, and you go for all of them until you get all the meteors. And what you're looking for is the brightest meteors. Maybe not like a really faint one that looks like a line, but oh, maybe it's right there. Uh, really try and go for the brightest meteors that you captured that night. And after that, what you can do is up here, you can go to attribute and just click the two star rating. And then you can just click is equal to two stars. So these are all my two stars, and that night, the brightest meteors, I got a total of 16, like really bright meteors, and that was cycling through like 400 photos. So basically, you go through, there's one right there, I don't know why I pointed to the screen, you can't see that, um, there's one right there, 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 somewhere there, there, and basically, you can zoom in and see all these meteors. So. What I like to do first is I'll go to this photo and what I do is I'll uh, do some basic adjustments to this photo. Um, I'll actually reset this so I can show you. So first off, for night photos, I uh, usually go here, click, and click. And this basically just removes any distortion vignetting in the image. And then what I do is I go all the way up and I start just adjusting the basic um, sliders, so maybe a little contrast, bring down the highlights because it was uh, some light pollution in the distance. Shadows don't really touch just because um, it was already kind of pretty bright. Um, and we're going to go here, and the whites, if you hold down the alt key what you can do is kind of edit to the whites or the blacks a little more, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you kind of just go on what you think the photo should look like. Clarity. For night photos, I do maybe plus 10, very light on the clarity. And then vibrance and saturation, I usually pull this up. So this is already a naturally blue photo. It was shot at a more blue uh, white balance or a cool white balance. And I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit, but not too much. I, I, I like the, the blue feel of the image. Um, we can go here and basically just, maybe just this just a bit. 
go right here. And basically, um, so that's pretty good. And what I would do is then just copy this to all the photos, and then all the photos are around the same look and the same color temperature, all of that. And what you do, and to do that actually is you get you click the photo that you're on, and then you click maybe you do shift click, and then what you're gonna do is press sync. You would check all, and then you would just click synchronize, and that would sync all the photos for you. So you click sync, bam. So now all these images are exactly the same, just like how you saw it in here. And then I don't know why I only did it to like four photos. Um, let's do it to the rest. So sync, sync the rest of the photos. Okay, so now all the photos are pretty much the same. And now what we want to do is really focus on the meteors because that's what we're here to edit, the meteors. So we're going to zoom in on a meteor in the shot. We're going to go to our brush tool. And now what we're going to do, reset all this, is we're going to make the brush really skinny and you can do that with um, like scrolling your mouse, the wheel right there. Just do that. And I'm going to press O or click this check mark and that means that whatever you paint is now going to be red so you can see what you're painting. And I'm going to click the very edge of this meteor. So right here, I'm going to hold the shift button and I'm not dragging or clicking or anything and then click up here. And that basically just draws a straight line. So you see how that red drew a straight line because meteors, you know, most of them are straight lines. So it, instead of just drawing it or guessing, you can just hold shift and it makes a perfect line. So now that we have that selected, I'm going to uncheck this. And then if I bump the exposure up, that only affects the meteor. So you can see that. And our whole goal here is just to brighten up the meteors a little bit, you know, give them a little more punch. So you can adjust it however much you like. Um, of course, you can go really more uh, detailed in painting the meteor, so nothing um, but the meteor is adjusted. So here you can see maybe a little of the sky is affected, but that's okay for now. Um, what I've found is exposure and whites usually bump the meteor up and make it look brightest. So just play around with that. You can even um, adjust the saturation of it maybe a little bit. All this stuff. And the clarity, that usually gives it some texture. Just put it right there. And click done. And then you can do the backslash key. And it shows you before and after. Before and after. So it's a little brighter. And from the normal image, before, after, before, after. So basically, um, you do that for all of your meteor shots. And so you would go here, you'd click, all that. And you do that for how many shots you have. I have 16, so I would go and do that. And then once you're done with all that, this is basically done with the Lightroom section of it. Um, so our whole goal here is we're going to open these photos in Photoshop and then we're going to have a base layer, so a base sky image, and then basically just add all these meteors to that one layer. So we're going to just paint in the meteor part and it's going to stack and stack and stack until we have about 16 meteors in one photo. So what we're going to do is Control A, copy all of these, and we're going to right click on any of them and go edit in and uh, click open as layers in Photoshop. So click this, and depending on how many photos you have and how fast your computer is, this might take a little while because it takes some time for Photoshop to load all of those photos in. So we'll be back when you know it loads. One eternity later. And it's done. Oh, oh the nick of time. All right, so guys, we are back, and Photoshop has loaded all these layers. Okay, so now we have all these layers. And what we are going to do, basically, if you have never been into Photoshop before, I'm going to give you a very, very brief, uh, short rundown of it. So these are all called layers, and these are all the files, and each layer is on top. So these are like the little eyeballs that you can see. So basically, if I were to remove all of these layers except that one, you see this photo, and then if I turn this photo on, it goes on top of it. So you see the image moving? That is what a layer is. So basically all of these photos are just stacked on top of each other. And if you can guess it, we're basically going to take one meteor from here and then just stack meteor, 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 meteor all the way up. And we do that through layer masks. So actually what I'm going to do is take these and move them to the top because I don't want to do them first. So basically uh, to hide all of these layers, what you're going to do is just hold this one eyeball down and scroll down. Just drag it all the way down. 
If you scroll all the way, then you're set a blank canvas, so turn the first layer on, and we're on this one. So we see this meteor right here. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have this first layer clicked, and we're going to go to this layer, we're going to unhide it, so turn it on, and then we're going to click this layer mask button right here. So click that. We're going to go to our brush, which is B, so click B for brush, and then we're going to have a black color. So now what we're going to do is we're trying to paint this meteor in, okay? Because if we turn this layer off, that's the meteor that's behind it. So what we can do, paint this meteor in. And it kind of looks weird because you paint it around the whole meteor and then the stars are moving because they're different images. So what we're going to do is uh, shrink our brush. And you can do that by uh, clicking the bracket key, the left bracket key. And we're basically going to try and find the meteor. So it's right there. And then what we can do is press X to reveal white. So I'm basically just painting around the stars. So it's just the meteor that we are revealing. And as you can see when we zoom out, we have two meteors, right? That's from this image and this image right here. So now we're going to do the exact same thing for all of these, uh, the rest of the meteors. So click this top image above it. We're going to unhide it. And now, instead of just clicking the layer mask button, we're going to hold Alt and click it. And you see it now goes to a black square instead of a white square. Now the black square is because we are hiding that image right now. If we shift click it, there's an X that appears, and we see this media right here. This is the media that we're trying to bring out. So we're going to click this one, and we're going to press, we want to be on a white brush so we can paint through. We're going to shrink our brush, and then exactly how we did in Lightroom, we're going to click one end, hold shift, and then click the other end. And that basically just brings the meteor. And you'll see what I mean when I unclick, so shift, and then click this, so the red square disappears. And look at that, we have one, two, three. We have three meteors. And if I, this, and basically, if you alt click this layer mask, you can see the whole image is black, and then it's just that one little strip where we painted the meteor in. That is what a layer mask is. You're just painting over a layer. So, we're going to do that for all the rest of the images. So click this one on. We're going to add a black layer mask. So alt, click, hold. We're going to shift click to hide it. And then we're just going to paint this meteor in. And always make sure you're painting with a white brush, because white reveals and black conceals. So you want to reveal the meteor and then click here, and bam. You see that? All right, so we have four meters now, and you just go all the way up through the line. So basically, we're going to just repeat this process over. So again, you click this top image, you unhide it right there. You're going to alt-click the layer mask, so you have a black layer mask. You're going to shift-click it, so you hide it. You find your meteor right here, get your brush tool, you're going to make sure you're um, painting white, and then you're just going to click one end of it, hold shift, and click the other end, bam. And then you unshift click this one, and bam, zoom out, and you have your meteors. So I'm going to repeat this process for all the ones up there, and I'll see you there. And one small tip is, since this meteor and this meteor, they look like basically right next to each other, and we don't want that. We want, because that kind of looks not realistic, in an image at least. So what we can do is click here and you press the uh, V tool or click the move tool and just drag this meteor and you can just kind of drag it wherever you want. So I'm going to drag it up here so it's not totally just right next to that one. And there we go. And then you just keep going on. You can see I did all the meteors, and basically, last thing uh, I would maybe say for you to do is uh, just mess around with the position of the meteors and maybe brighten them up even more if you want to. And the cool thing is, is you have total flexibility with all these meteors. So let's say, oh, maybe I don't really like 
this one or that one, you can just go down the list and delete the ones that you don't want. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility with this image. And yeah, that's basically it. So what you do now is click all of these. So click the top one, go all the way down to the bottom, shift click, and then press Control E or right click and select Merge Layers. So that just makes all these layers into one. You right click and go to Flatten Image. And then you would just Control S or go up and put File, Save. Okay, and then the cool thing about Photoshop and Lightroom is they work sync, I guess that's the word for it. So you go back to Lightroom and your photo is going to be in here. So it should be this one, I think. Click this and yep, here's your photo in Lightroom. And then you can edit more of it, all of that good stuff. Yeah, that's basically how you edit together uh, multiple meteors into one image. Um, I think for my final image, I went a little more advanced. Yeah, for my final image, I went a little more advanced. And you can see I brightened them up a little more, and then I just um, put them with a different foreground to make it a little more interesting. You can totally do that. You can leave it the same. Um, it's really just about learning. And with meteors, it's really fun because now you have a full image with 16, 17 different meteors. So it can be really cool. Uh, you can impress your friends and family with it. You can create some really cool images. Well. Hope you guys like this one. Also, like, comment, and subscribe on this video, and tell me what you'd like to see more of. I'll put this in the down in the links. Um, sign up for my email uh, so you can get your free manual mode cheat sheet, so you can master manual mode really easily, and then print it out and take it wherever you're photographing, so you can always check back to it. Uh, so just click down below and sign up for my email. Have fun, and keep photographing. I'll see you next time. Um, can I have a nice... Staring contest. You blinked. Sorry. You did. Just not my fault, you know. <laughs>